Passport to the Palm Beaches is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Welcome to Passport to the Palm Beaches, where we dream, discover, and explore. We'll give you an insider's look at everything the stunning Palm Beaches has to offer. America's first resort destination is adorned with miles and miles of gorgeous tropical white sandy beaches, world-class golf, tennis, museums, extraordinary people, spectacular restaurants, renowned fishing and diving, luxury real estate, shopping, countless outdoor activities, and an unexpected wild side. It is the ultimate playground, retreat, and adventure all in one. Simply put, the Palm Beaches is the perfect escape. Don't settle for the ordinary. The Palm Beaches, it's like no other place in the world. Welcome to Passport to the Palm Beaches. I'm your host, Jacqueline Journey, and we are here on the world-renowned Antique Road, just minutes from downtown West Palm Beach. They've got more than 40 antique shops, design stores, even some vintage boutiques. You gotta check this place out. Coming up on this episode, it's all about paradise with a purpose. You're gonna get an insider's look into some amazing individuals and organizations right here in the Palm Beaches that are making a positive impact, including the world famous SOS Warriors Marching Band, Gay Polo, and the beautiful Musk Tavern situated right on gorgeous Lake Okeechobee. One and a two and a three. That's to the Palm Beaches! Perfect. Dip, 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 dip. One, two, three, four. Thanks for tuning in to Passport to the Palm Beaches. I'm your host, Jacqueline Journey, and today we've got something super special for you. We're here with the nonprofit Sounds of Success Music Corp in Riviera Beach, oh, Florida, yeah. with its founder, Antoine K. Miller. He is extraordinary, an incredible musician in his own right, and he has put together this truly amazing group. You're giving the kids such an amazing outlet. What has been the most rewarding part of this? Uh, just getting these kids into college. Each year, you know, we have a graduating ceremony, and then, you know, the kids that I currently do have in school, when they come back and just thank you for, you know, just opening that door and shining some light on them, to me, that's the, that's the beauty. That makes all of this worthwhile. For something like this, it takes a lot of community support. It does. You know, not only from this community locally, but from all over the world. But right. tell people a little bit about the importance of it and how they can get involved. Well, for one, we, me and my team, we have a love and a passion for what we do. Uh, we volunteer our time here, so we're not getting paid for this. This is something that we do 100% as, as community service. With your donations, you can get a mouthpiece to a student who's in need, okay? Say, please give me a mouthpiece. <laughs> please give me a mouthpiece. The kids get a chance to travel and experience. We just came back from Tampa where they won first place. We're going to St. Petersburg this weekend to represent. They're going to be experiencing London. So most of these kids never, never travel or even left this wonderful city until they joined the program. Y'all cover down, cover down. Like, spread out. Don't be so close. Spread out, babies. How do you direct so many people at the same time? Uh, I mean, well, what a for job. one, it's discipline. They know that as well. Discipline is the first thing. So, and within our program, we are big on discipline. We prepare our kids for the future, you know. And once you get the discipline part in place, everything else just flows. You're about to hear the amazing sounds of success. Let me get a big warrior. Let me get a big warrior. One, two, fill it up. And one, two, first note matter. It is pretty cool. I like it because it gives me opportunity to explore the like the world and stuff like that and it gives me opportunity to have fun and meet other kids. I think everybody that's here has some part of them that changed. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing change. So do you like playing and marching at the same time? Is it tough? Yeah, this is like how we do it. Uh-huh. We all have different relationships within the band, but when we come together, it's a one big family. This helps me get to college, and it helps me with a lot of things, so I absolutely think this is helping me out. The amazing part about this is kids have a future here, because you can come here tomorrow, the next day, the next year, the next year, the next year, and you can keep going until you're ready for college. Yeah, once I joined, I was like, okay, this is me. 
So what do you think you'd be doing after school if you weren't part of the SOS marching band? Martial arts. Oh, martial arts, all right. You're a tough cookie. Have you ever taken martial arts before? No, but I've always wanted to. Uh-huh, well maybe you could do martial arts and play the trumpet at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, that might be hard. Thanks for watching! Passport to the Palm Beaches is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Welcome to Wellington, the winter equestrian capital of the world. We are here today for the International Gay Polo Tournament, and it is incredible here at the beautiful Wellington National Polo Center. Let's head in for some good times, great fun, and fantastic competition. Oh my God, it's fabulous! We're at the International Gay Polo Tournament with the man, the myth, the legend, Chip McKenney, founder of the Gay Polo League. What an incredible event. Thank Tell you. Us. Thank you for being here. Oh, we're so happy to be here, and it's such a fabulous time. I highly recommend any of your events. But tell us, how did you get into this? What made you start the Gay Polo League? Uh, you know, it's a very simple thing. I started because I wanted to meet more gay people and extend my social life within the LGBT community. And that's really what started. And I have a show jumping background, and I'd stopped show jumping. And I thought, okay, well, I'll try polo. And literally, in my very first polo lesson in Santa Barbara, I thought, this is a perfect, perfect sport for gay people. Joaquin De La Piedra with a ton of goals for the guys in black. Back in midfield, here comes Tyler Thompson getting a little touch on it. So I started the league in 2006, mm -hmm. and it was a little bit of a ragtag, like once a month, kind of, sort of, maybe. And then it just got this momentum and this traction. And now uh, this is our 13th year of doing an international polo tournament here in Wellington. We have members in 15 countries, and we produce three international gay polo tournaments a year. One here, which is our flagship, one in Europe, and one in Argentina. Thompson in the gold mile, though, baby. I think for us, you know, our mission really is to elevate awareness of LGBT athletes. So it's not just about what happens on the polo field. It's really equally important that we have presence on the side of the fields, right? And so we developed the GPL tailgate competition and that encouraged people to come and bring their best creativity and their best energy. So the party kind of starts months before they get here. So that's how it started. Able to put it away and we go nine to one here, 225 to go. Chapter number three. I feel for us, the absence of visibility is what creates chaos and misunderstanding. So by being visible, we hope to encourage discussion and awareness, and through that comes acceptance and inclusion. What happens at Polo stays at Polo. We are an LGBT identified event. However, we are inclusive, we're not exclusive. So even today, we have players on our field who are outside our gay community and they're playing with us. We have a lot of sponsors around and a lot of tailgates around that are not within our community and that's wonderful for us because we understand the value and the benefit of having allies. We love everything about gay polo, the environment, the fun, the friends, the family, the unity. We're here for everyone and it's a lot of fun. If gay people say how important it is, that's one thing. But if non-gay people say it's important too, it seems louder and it seems more authentic. We love the Palm Beaches! We realized when we started this event after a few years and we figured out how to pay for it and produce enough that, <laughs> we thought, we have a platform. We, we could be doing some good. So what we do every year is we choose a LGBT-facing charity that we partner with and then we use this event to raise money. So at the end of the day, everybody who attends is actually helping other people. So you know, polo is a, it's a unique sport because it's really not an inner city sport because you need so much space to do it, but it's a glamorous sport in that it's ancient, it's over 2,000 years old, 
It's a team sport. It's played globally, and it's one of the few sports you can play at any level that you're comfortable with. So you don't have to be a superstar polo player to compete and have a wonderful time. So that's really what polo does. It serves that purpose. I have one vision for this. I would love to use this event to raise a lot of money to help LGBT charities. If I could raise a million dollars, two million dollars, three million dollars, and I believe it's possible. You know, we're just gaining traction and we're getting every year it's better and better, but that would really be my goal. Absolutely, but you know, the people come, they love it. Like I said, everyone we talked to was like, oh, we came, we were having such a good time, we left even better time. Isn't that they, they really have an amazing time, and you've created an awesome community thank you, here. Thank you, thank you. And people. I just want to be, I, I didn't do it alone, but I get to take all the credit. For it, so, <laughs> so I don't mind that either, but, but really, Well, without a lot you, we people. probably wouldn't be here, though. Well, thank you so much for saying that, I appreciate it. And thank you for being here, more importantly. No, we're very, and letting very. letting us speak to your audience and helping us spread the GPL word. Absolutely, right. anyone who's interested GayPolo.com. Chip McKenney, he's the man if you want to bring an event like this to your town. <laughs> yeah, he's, right. the, he's the man to call. That's true. <laughs> call me. I don't care. I'd love to talk to you. This event is just one of great pomp and circumstance, both on the field and off the field, and that's what makes it different. Thanks for watching Passport to the Palm Beach. Just hope you had a fantastic time. I know I did. Next time you're here in the area, make sure and check out the National Polo Center for a fantastic time and, of course, the International Gay Polo Competition. Passport to the Palm Beaches is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Thanks for tuning in to Passport to the Palm Beaches. I'm your host, Jacqueline Journey. We've got such an amazing show today. We're here out on gorgeous Lake Okeechobee at the Muck Tavern. We're going to meet some NFL players and try some amazing food. So stay right where you are. Thanks for tuning in to Passport to the Palm Beaches. And I'm here with Dante Thompson. I am so honored. Thanks so much for talking thank you, to thank us you, today. Thank you, thank you. And we are here at one of your passion projects, the Muck Tavern, right here on gorgeous yes. Lake Okeechobee. So tell me a little bit about the restaurant. This is a really special project. Oh, uh, yeah, it's very special, man. Um, it's really, you know, all four of us from here, all the guys are from here. And, you know, we used to come home all the time. We had no place to go eat. There's no place, you know, this is the only place around here. So we came up with this concept, man. And, we got an opportunity to come out here to get this property on the water and the community have been responding, the, the support have been through the roof. So it's a blessing, man. We just so happy to be the, the group to bring this here to this area. This is a really special area, by the way. A lot of people yes. don't know. It's almost like a pipeline to college football and the NFL. Yeah. What do you think it is? I mean, the people here obviously are very hardworking, very dedicated, because yeah. it takes a lot to get it into does. the NFL. It does, yeah, it does. I think from right here, um, we learned grit early. Most of our parents probably worked in the field, the sugar field, the, uh, the cane fields, or they picking beans, watermelon field. We, you know, we come from that, so we understand hard work. We understand the grit part of it. And this whole restaurant thing too is to change that narrative, right? Because we come from here, and all we thought was football, football, football. Now we the football guys. We come back to show you, hey, you can be an entrepreneur. You can open businesses. We want to show the kids, hey. You can do all these things, not only just play football. So. Yeah, giving back is such a huge part yes. of being successful as yes. you've been. But I find it really interesting that there are four of you who really grew up here, yes. you know, and this is where you got your start and then yeah. you all come back. Yeah, it's a beautiful story, man. It's a beautiful story. We so excited about this project because I remember when we came here, nobody was here and it's always in our heads, always a vision. And now you come in, you got customers, you got people coming in and now it's and it's actually happening, so it's a beautiful thing. Why do you think that's so important to give back? What what inspires you to come back to the community and give back like this? Um, I think just to show the next generation, you know, that this is what it's about. Uh, and then just taking our community to the next level. Uh, we know that we lack a lot of things in this area, and we have the resources to bring it back here. So why not bring it home? You know, our thing was we could go anywhere to open up a restaurant, and yeah, we may make more money on the coast, or, but this is our chance to build back our hometown. And it's so important so for the, the next generation to see that. So, because if we start something now, the next generation take it to the next level. So we just want to be that initial seed, just plant that first seed. This is the only place that sits on the Lake Okeechobee like this. Mm -hmm. It's Polk and Florida. It's the only one that got this view. So, you know, if we just keep stacking our stone, this is going to be a destination spot.
can't get gator bites everywhere. That's that's correct. <laughs> Chef, did you drag that gator out of the lake yourself? Yeah, I got him with my bare hands. You know, he was trying to run for me, but I, you know, I'm kind of fast. All the best chefs go to the Cordon Bleu. Oh man. Like our executive chef Ferguson right here. We had some fun in the kitchen. Yeah, we did. I mean, you did all the work, let's be clear. Uh, you, you helped a little. <laughs> Just a little. Yeah, that, it is. You don't want me to help in the it kitchen, trust me. Alone. It inspired me, you know? Well, thank you. <laughs> Speaking of being inspired, you had some awesome grandparents, right? And yes, they're yeah. really how you got into being an executive chef. So tell us a little bit about how you learned from them and, and what's so important. That's such a big part of your cooking. Okay. So my grandmother, um, she loves seafood. And uh, that was one of her main things. She even had this way she, she said shrimp. They weren't shrimp, they were snaps. All right, so now tell me a little bit about these dishes. Okay. You made some delicious gator bites. Oh. What's the secret to gator bites? The secret to them is it's all about making sure that they're not chichui. Uh-huh. Chichui. Chichui? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and how do you how do you do that exactly? Uh so you just gotta you gotta cook it with love. So you've got this fantastic southern twist on your Jamaican seafood extravaganza mm -hmm. here. So we have here some shrimp and grits. Yes. Now yours are really special. Tell us about how you prepare them. What I like to do with mine is I like to layer the flavor. Mm -hmm. So I don't cook it all like at one time. I kind of, this goes in first, that goes in next, and then I marry them with the butter. Let's get this a little closer now, you know. All right. It's going to get serious to... over here. <laughs> you may have to take over the show because I'm probably going to keep eating. Oh, man. <laughs> but yeah, this this here, man, this is something I picked up alone on my mm. journey. And I kind of spent it to my own thing. My grandmother, she loves swamp. So that's what we got in there. We got a lot of swamp in there. And uh, it's a, a little andouille sausage. But I won't go further into detail with seeing I just gave you a couple hints. It's a secret. Yeah. Your grandmother probably yeah. would not want you to tell she everyone. She would probably come down right now and give me a couple. <laughs> <laughs> this food is absolutely delicious. You need to head out to the Muck Tavern on Lake Okeechobee in Pahokee, Florida. There it is. And if you do, make sure and say hello to Chef Ferguson. He's the man. Hi, guys. <laughs>well, you know, you've been giving back throughout your entire career. You've played with some amazing teams, and it seems like everywhere you are, you know, you're always giving back, whether it's Thanksgiving turkeys or Christmas mm -hmm. gifts for underprivileged kids and all kinds of stuff like that. What do you think inspires you so much to give back? Um, just because when I was a kid growing up, I didn't have a lot, and a lot, and I used to pray a lot, and, you know, God answered a lot of my prayers, and, you know, he blessed me with a lot. So as I come back and see, you know, in the private and see the kids grew up how I grew up and living how I live and like it just be like, man, God bless me with this. At least I can help them and help the parents with the light bill or, you know, when prom time come around, help the kids get prom calls or whatever it need or even a job, you know. You should see when the sun is going down, it look like it going below the lake. Beautiful. It's just awesome, man. It's, it's everything to me. Well, when you come out to the Muck Tavern, you might even get really lucky and Purnell might be here and tell you what the specials are that night. Yeah, please come. <laughs> I call, I'll be here mostly on Tuesday evenings and Thursdays. You heard it from the man. Yeah. All right, everybody head out to the Muck Tavern on gorgeous Lake Okeechobee. Thank you yes. so much, Purnell. Thank Such you. Such a pleasure to meet you. Thank what a great for coming guy. Out. Yeah. Yes. Appreciate you, Jackie. Come on out to Palm Beach County's west coast here on gorgeous Lake Okeechobee to the Muck Tavern. Chef Ferguson's got that amazing food. Might even meet some NFL stars. 
Thanks for watching Passport to the Palm Beaches. I'm going to wrap up this episode with a quote from my book, The Divas in the Details, the celebrity and CEO inspired guide to confidence, courage, and style. And this quote I absolutely love. It's from Sandra Bullock. She's a huge believer in karma, and she says, you get what you give, whether it's good or bad. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again next week for more Passport. As a thank you for watching, head over to my website, jackjourney.com, and apply this special promo code for our viewers, I Know Jack, for a fabulous reduced price on my Clean Skin Elixir Youth Potion Number no. 9. Do it now. This is for a limited time only while supplies last. Your skin will thank you for it. It fights the signs of aging, keeps your skin hydrated, and protects it from environmental aggressors. We'll see you again next time for more Passport to the Palm Beaches. Check out all of our other episodes on demand at thepalmbeaches.tv.